So this is a quick uh, DX tutorial on some of the surface modeling tools. Um, there's a lot of different surface modeling tools in here, um, but this particular model highlights um, some ones that may not be used every day. Um, so I wanted to make a quick tutorial on how to extract some surface information from this and model it, just the outer uh, portions of the model. So as you can see here, it's a, just a regular mouse that I'm actually using right now. And, um, you know, from the looks of it, it looks a little bit difficult, you know, if you're going to surface model it, but there's some interesting things here with DX that are, uh, that give you the ability to uh, model it pretty easily. So the first thing is, uh, many people know of this tool, but I always like to highlight it just to show um, it exists. To model that top surface, um, the best way would be just to cut cross sections through this top area and create like a nice clean lofted surface through the top surface of that part. Um, but with Design X, if you wanted to take a slightly faster route, I can actually use these regions. See these regions I already have created. I can turn them on and off. Um, what this region tool is, is it will take the scan data. Again, this is a polygon model here. It's created from scanning this part. And uh, what the auto segment tool is, just like that icon kind of shows, it breaks up the scan into separate selectable areas or regions, and it groups the triangles. And the way it's doing it is based on common curvature, and you can change the settings in there, and you can even edit these regions in any way by like splitting them and all kinds of different things. Um, but for the sake of today, all I did is just ran the auto segment, and you see they're not perfect but they definitely help you select things really fast, especially for something like the loft wizard. So if I come into the loft wizard and I just click that top surface, um, I can automatically grab the, all those triangles and plug them into this tool really fast. So this uh, loft wizard operates a few different ways. I can do it based on a plane, which is kind of what I'm doing right now, or by a curve. So I can actually have the software create a loft that follows along a 3d curve if i want to in this instance what i'm going to tell it to do is just drape a surface over top of this and that's what you're looking at here is the bounding box for this top surface to show how far it should extend past what the region actually is because if you're going to fit a lofted surface on there Many times you're trimming it with other surfaces later, so you want it to extend past the extents of that region. Now the other setting here is I can actually tell it how many cross sections to create, and that's what those red planes are, is how many sketch cross sections it will cut through the uh, part itself. So you can see here, I'm going to set it for 10 right now, and then you can tell it what type of sketches to create. I actually like having it put them on separate reference planes and sketches. And then once I'm done editing things in this section, the software goes ahead and fits that loft, draws all the sketch cross sections, and then gives you a preview. So there we go. Just takes a second. I think I didn't click directly on the next icon there. So you see it went ahead and it drew all those cross sections and gave me a preview of it. At this point, it's telling me I do have the ability to change the number of spline points. So if I wanted to say use 15 nodes per spline, you'll see it upgrades the... Uh, or adds more nodes, which will give you more resolution per section, you know. So if I do 20, you can see here it updates. Now another thing that is really powerful about the Loft Wizard while you're in here is you can visually see that it, it looks like it's fitting pretty close to the mesh, uh, but you don't really have any validation unless you toggle over to the Accuracy Analyzer and you hit this deviation from body. Now, this deviation from body is just going to do a 3D comparison between the mouse itself and 
the uh, surface that we fit. And you have the ability here, if you want, especially on this side, you'll see that it tucks under and it bulges up there. So I can move sections or I can actually hold control and then drag and copy sections just to give it more resolution and allow it to fit to the surface closer. So once you're happy with the cross sections, you can move them around, copy and paste them. Uh, you can hit OK. The software will go ahead and finish creating that surface model. Now, like I said before, you'll see it has some wrinkles in it because I'm kind of fitting to everything that's there. Um, but, you know, if you really want to be particular about it, you can cut those 10 or 15 cross sections through the data and draw them manually as well. I'm just showing some interesting tools that are inside of DesignX for today's purposes. Now for the bottom, what we can do, there's a variety of different things that you can do here. Um, I can just fit a flat plane to the bottom if I wanted to use like more automatic tools. Or I can even come in and select that side plane and say I want to do a mesh sketch and then go normal two and draw a line on screen and then snap it to wherever I want to. And if you need to resize that line, you can do this. You can just drag it out. So you can do it that way. There's a whole host of different methods that you could use for that. Um, now, if I draw that line, what I'm planning on doing, obviously, is then coming in and just doing like a mid-plane extrusion of a surface and then creating those two surfaces. So you see I've created the top and the bottom. Now I need to work on the sides. So for the sides, we'll go ahead and hide those two and look at this. <clears throat> So what I plan on doing is drawing a curved network on the surface of this part, actually better done without the regions on, um, drawing a curve around the top rim and the bottom rim, and then creating a patch network of surfaces that wrap all the way around the sides here. Now, there is a ton of different ways of doing this. Um, so one way is just to manually come in and say I want to 3D sketch and use the spline tool and you know I can just sketch directly on the surface of the mesh and draw all the way around right so that's the way I tend to use because I can create nice clean curves exactly how I want them all the way around the top but I want to show a couple other options as well um, so you can use this uh, tool called trace feature line which is interesting Oops. Let's get back out of it again and select that data all over again. There we go. Just get out of it and do it one more time. So you see here, it will go around the part and create a feature line. Now this also requires a little bit of editing. So if you, if you create it, I can then come in and grab and move it down. And the whole time this is actually snapped to the mesh itself. So you can see I was able to offset it pretty easily over here, but then on, in this area, you know, I need to drag Actually, we'll just deselect, and I can I can grab portions of the, the line and then move them down. This is a, actually a decent way to do it. If you need to smooth it out, there's a bunch of ways. I can actually grab the curve. One way of smoothing it out is you'll see that this curve, automatically just selecting it, it tells you that it has 478 points. If I wanted just to reduce it to 100 nodes you'll see now I have 100 that make up that entire thing so that smooths it out or I can actually come over to smooth curve where I come over here and I hit smooth and then I can just smooth it that way so that way is is awesome right uh, so just dragging it and extracting uh, trace feature line you know on some parts that part that tool works really well on some, it does not. It just depends on uh, what you're looking to do here. And then 
for the bottom, one way that I like to do that bottom is we actually have another tool that will allow you to cut a cross section through a mesh. So if I want to say uh, I can draw a line on screen, you'll see it'll just draw a spline intersecting um, the mesh. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the bottom plane. And then I can just bump it up just a little bit and then let off on it just preview and make sure that it intersects exactly where I want to now it's gonna bisect the thing over and over again so when I hit OK and accept it you'll see that it's going to have these other curves so what I like to do is I've had issues once or twice where I accidentally had these things getting in the way so I'll actually just come in and get rid of them so just click on them and and delete them or I can do this where I select those two curves and then inverse select and delete them that way and then the idea here the way I prefer to I tend to you to model this part is um, just come in and add my vertical ribs by using that same manual spline tool and then I just make sure that when I draw these I create nice clean curves that connect so they got to connect from one to the other it is very easy to come in here and click on one line and click on click past the other and then have it not actually connect um, together so that's why I mentioned that is just that it, it can be very easy to create messy curves and if you ever have curves that are not connected it's easy to just drag those nodes and move them around or see actually I just did it right there see where I did not click on it so if you see I roll over that curve and hit enter it is pretty easy just to come in and drag it that way but you also have curve ends and intersection tools so you can actually just do a control all and then click on OK for intersection any curves that come within 0 .004 uh, you know four thousandths of an inch it will automatically move them and create a node to intersect them together the same thing goes with two curve ends that are near each other you can actually change that value and make it so it, it puts them on top of each other from there so those are really handy tools for creating curves because it is very easy to uh, create curves that do not and I am not being real particular here you can be a lot more uh, specific as to oops so you can easily uh, I just hit undo there you can easily accidentally drag curves around so just be careful when you're doing this um, and I'm not being particular you see I would probably just model half of this and trim it together so that way it's symmetrical because right now you'll see that I'm just kind of going around the part and creating curves wherever not really being particular as to whether this part is symmetrical or not so you can see there we go I'm almost done oops see I accidentally click and drag You see I created all those curves around so now I d essentially have this curved network that wraps all the way around and you can use that same section tool to cut cross sections all through it and then trim the curves to each other and be a little more exact about it than I was when I draw so there's again there's a whole host of methods and I can even mirror so I could even just draw half of these and mirror the curves to the other side and have them snap to the mesh that way um, probably should have done that on this one but um, so once I have this network I'll just come in turn my mesh on and in this instance I'm going to use the boundary fit so if I come down to the menu add-ins legacy boundary fit the software automatically looks at the sketch if I have it selected here and it tries to infer what you want to uh, have it 
fit boundary curves too. Now, right now, I, I can tell, because I've used this before, it's selecting everything. What the best thing to do is, is leave the sketch alone and come down to curve loops and just click in here. And then it'll allow you to like deselect and remo remove curve loops and deselect the bottom as well. Now it looks like I have a problem up here because it didn't select this one. Those two ends are not connected. I can see them right there. So this is a common problem. Again, dirty curves make it very difficult for the software to work with. So this is a good chance to just see what happens when you're trying to use it. And so now if I just come in here and I just exactly what we were talking about before, I'll just edit that sketch. And I was talking about how you can drag these on top of each other. So now that curve is a bounded curve and I hit OK. So if I come over and I hit next, I could just create a little more smoothness and even take the resolution down to 10 by 10 and hit OK. So relax that area out. You can relax the mesh itself or I could actually just, uh, if I manually drew these, it probably would have made it a little bit more smooth as well. Um, it just depends. Um, the other thing that I can do is adjust the actual curve resolution, which I might want to do here in a second. Um, so that did a little bit. The other thing you can do is come into my, uh, just make sure you hide that. I can come in, grab that entire curve. You'll see it's 629. I can reduce that down to 100 as well. That alone should smooth it out a little bit. And then, of course, now it's going to recalculate everything because I changed that curve. So it's going to recalculate the sketch, which then in turn recalculates the boundary fit, then the extend after that. So there, now it's a little more smooth. And again, if I manually drew them, I'd probably, it'd probably be a little better. So now I'll come over to the top and do the same thing. Okay, so now I have the top and the bottom. So we'll turn those on. Now I can do a surface trim if I want to and trim all these together, which is not that difficult to do here just by doing a trim of all these all at once. We can show both options. Or another option is to come over here and go into insert surface solidify with solidify i can actually grab all my surfaces and if they intersect each other to create a solid then you can it'll automatically trim them and to make them a solid right so that is one method the other method is a surface trim this is a little flakier option here you can select all three of your surfaces little trick here is if you turn them on and off, it'll automatically throw all of them into the target. So I'm going to trim them all together. Now when I hit next, it's going to give you this interface where you can select the top, side, and bottom. And then you'll see this is exactly what I'm talking about, how it can be a pain in the butt because I'll accidentally select something. So if I come over here, let it recalculate here. So I accidentally clicked this area, right? And you see that now it added another one. So you see the game here. Um, you got to be real careful in this view. It's difficult to see. But that, and of course, if it trims them together and it does form a solid, then it will create a solid body. So that's just a little bit of a surfacing demo showing some of the tools inside of DesignX.